In this video, we will learn on how to scan servers for compliance with different security hardening policies. And we are going to use an open source solution, which is called Open SCAP. So before going into all this nitty gritty stuff about Open SCAP as a scanning solution for your servers, let's basically understand the general organization perspective. Probably your organization might be following CIS benchmarks and probably if, if your organization is mostly a US based organization, probably they follow NIST benchmark. So if you're handling workloads related to uh, uh, payment cards like credit cards, debit cards, all these things transaction related, probably you're using a PCI related um, environment. So for all these different types of environments, you require different types of security hardening policies. So for example, in CIS, you cannot um, allow a particular drive to be allowed to scan remotely. So you cannot do a drive scan remotely so that someone can map your drive to that particular server. So they cannot do that in, in CIS benchmark. So there are several uh, hardening policies that are available. So let's now assume that you're working in a large IT company and you have several of these servers to manage. So let's get into the perspective. We will start with understanding what is SCAP. So SCAP basically stands for Security Content Automation Protocol. So this has been defined by the US government and the NIST. So this will tell us like what are the ways you can maintain a secure computing environment. So for this demonstration and for this entire scenario, we have our server, which is an Ubuntu server. So we are going to scan our server using a tool called Open SCAP. So Open SCAP comes with different tools uh, inside it. So we'll be doing that. And then we will be finding some vulnerabilities according to a particular benchmarking, security benchmarking and then we will resolve those vulnerabilities. Before we go any further, let's quickly understand what is security content automation protocol. So as I said, US NIST, it's a standard for doing automated auditing of your different computer systems just to ensure that they are all in compliance with your security policies. So what SCAP standard defines is basically an XML based file format, which is actually called XCCDF. So what does that XCCDF means is extensible configuration checklist description format. So this document is nothing. It's an XML document which contains different things. So it contains a rule. A rule is nothing but it's like a single system attribute that can be checked as part of a security policy. For example, you want to check a uh, status of a drive. You can, that's a particular rule to check the status of a particular hard drive. So that's a rule and you have something called um, um, a group. A group is a logical grouping of all your rule elements. For example, you want to do a lot of audit checks on Active Directory. So you can create a group in such a way that that entire group contains all the different Active Directory auditing checks. So that is one. And the third one is the profile. So profile is basically a combination of both rules and groups. So a profile for web servers, a profile for Active Directory servers, a profile for SharePoint. You can design your profiles according to that. Now let's quickly understand what is Open SCAP. So Open SCAP is a suite of open source tools to implement the SCAP, uh, SCAP standard. So we have uh, right now, if you see my screen, we have already opened the uh, SCAP workbench. So what we're going to do right now is basically load a particular XML file, which I told you. So this is the description of an XML file for Ubuntu 18.04. And the server which we are trying to do is an 18.04 Ubuntu server. So let's click on open and you get all these things, right? If you, if you observe, these are all rules. The rules you see, there are 40 rules selected on, on, on this one to run. Now, once you do this, it will give you two options. It's giving you an option to run it on the local 
uh, machine and you also have an option to run this on an SSH like you can run it on a remote server using SSH so what we're going to do is basically we are going to use our username in order to connect so we have already our SSH keys configured so let's start scan so what it's trying to do right now it's trying to contact the server and it will run different uh, rules against the server in order to find the results so for example um, you can see the diagnostics you can enable this diagnostics in the xml file or you can uh, you can cancel this one but um, now you can see um, it found a telnet server so 23 port uh, this needs to be uh, disabled uh, it's saying to uninstall the telnet server it's saying to disable the ssh root login and install the ntp server ntp service so reminding all looks good but let's quickly go through what all it found so so these are the rules it failed uh, for example you can see there if you want to drill further you can you can exactly learn what it's trying to say now once you have this file you can actually uh, save the result as uh, an html report and you can share this to um, your team you can also show the report here uh, which will be coming in a good format like you see here on the you get the entire description on what happened it will give you a particular score which is really good 31.66% uh, compliant which this one also you can convert into PDF and you can send it uh, to your uh, team for further evaluation so once you find a certain um, error or certain failure in your auditing procedure what you can do is basically you can log into that particular server and you can you can make the modification on the requirement and so that you will have your um, compliance uh, risk remote now what we're going to do is since it found all these failures and uh, things right uh, what i'm going to do right now is to create a custom policy so that it will not do the checks which i don't want it to do so for example your organization might have a unique security profile for doing this so they will they will have a customized profile so what i'm going to do um, first of all let's clear the screen what we are going to do is create a customized profile we'll select a new id for that um, anything like uh, modified or something modified yep so this is our customized profile right now what you see on the screen these are the different things that it's doing what i'm going to remove is if you remember the previous scan results it showed us to disable the ssh root login so i'm going to remove that because in our environment we require this ssh root login so that people will log in to do the customizations so to find that it's over in the end so let's collapse one by one so you can see the in-depth of each and every policy you can control a very generic policies like uh, for example in dhcp you, you want to do disable dhcp client you can you can select that disable dhcp client so that will be your customized uh, policy in doing that so um, like this you can what you can do is you can remove that particular sh file from here let's collapse all this let's do it here SSH search search not this one not this one not this one or let's do the complete uh, search to make it easy
Okay. So here I need to remove. So we remove that now. So we'll click OK. Now you don't see the SH login. Now if you run it, it will find all the other things, but again, it will not find the uh, SH login. That's that's how you can create your customized uh, customized uh, profiles for scanning. And this can be implemented at a very big organization level also. So I hope this video is informative. Thank you so much for watching it. Do let me know if you have any questions. Stay tuned for more videos and have a wonderful day. Till the next video. Bye-bye.